I trust you recognize the Last Supper, the great fresco by Leonardo da Vinci. And my dear, if you would close your eyes. Well, Lee, save us the parlor tricks. You asked for my help, I recall. Allow no man his indulgences. Now, mademoiselle, where is Jesus sitting? In the middle. Good. He and his disciples are breaking bread. And what drink? Wine. They drank wine. Splendid. And one final question. How many wine glasses are there on the table? One. The Holy Grail. Open your eyes. No single cup. No chalice. Well, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Considering both the Bible and standard Grail legends celebrate this moment as the definitive arrival of the Holy Grail. Hmm. Now, Robert, you could be of help to us. If you'd be so kind as to show us the symbols for man and woman, please. Oh, no balloon animals. Huh. <laughs> they can make a great duck. This is the original icon for male. It's a rudimentary phallus. Quite to the point. Yes, indeed. This is known as the blade. It represents aggression and manhood. It's a symbol still used today in modern military uniforms. Yes, the more penises you have, the higher your rank boys will be boys. Now, as you would imagine, the female symbol is its exact opposite. This is called the chalice. And the chalice resembles a cup or vessel, or more importantly, the shape of a woman's womb. No, the grail has never been a cup. It is quite literally this ancient symbol of womanhood. And in this case, a woman who carried a secret so powerful that if revealed, it would devastate the very foundations of Christianity. Wait, please. You're saying the Holy Grail is a person? A woman? And it turns out she makes an appearance right there. But they're all men. Are they? What about that figure on the right hand of our Lord, seated in the place of honor? Mm -hmm. Flowing red hair, folded feminine hands, hint of a bosom, no? Incroyable. It's called Scotoma. The mind sees what it chooses to see. Who is she? My dear, that's Mary Magdalene. The prostitute? She was no such thing. Smeared by the church in 591 Anno Domino Pud. Mary Magdalene was Jesus' wife. This is an old wives' tale. The original one, in fact. There's virtually no empirical proof. He knows as well as I do. There's much evidence to support it. Theories. There are theories. Notice how Jesus and Mary are clothed. Mirror images of each other. The mind sees what it chooses to see. And venturing into the even more bizarre, uh, notice how Jesus and Mary appear to be joined at the hip and are leaning away from each other as if to create a shape in the negative space between them. Leonardo gives us the chalice. Mm. Yes. Oh, and Robert, uh, notice what happens when these two figures <laughs> change position. Just because Da Vinci painted it doesn't make it true. No, but history, she does make it true. Now, listen to this. It's from the Gospel according to Philip. Philip? Yes, it was rejected at the Council of Nicaea, along with any other Gospels that made Jesus appear human and not divine. And the companion of the Saviour is Mary Magdalene. Christ loved her more than all the disciples and used to kiss her But this on says the... nothing of marriage. Well, actually, um, Robert, Actually, in those days, the word companion literally meant spouse. And this is from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene herself. She wrote a gospel? She may have. Robert, will you fight fair? She may have. 
And Peter said, did he prefer her to us? And Levi answered, Peter, I see you contending against a woman like an adversary. If the Savior made her worthy, who are you indeed to reject her? And then my dear Jesus goes on to tell Mary Magdalene that it's up to her to continue his church. Mary Magdalene, not Peter. The church was supposed to be carried on by a woman. <laughs>